So according to scripture, another very powerful person will eventually enter history who will be chosen, as it were, by the devil. This is the Antichrist. But he's, a, he's not some Superman born, you know, from the beginning, free of uh, somehow different than the rest of us. He's naturally born of a father and a mother. He's 100% man, having had a natural, normal birth. Okay, very important. And he's of Jewish descent and will govern the Jewish nation. Very important as well. The devil will come to him and tempt him with the same temptation that Christ did not succumb to. So even from the very beginning, the Antichrist will be in all ways taking the place of Christ, the opposite path of Christ, doing that, which looking at Christ and doing the opposite, as it were, right? So he, he's going to succumb to that which the, 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 the Lord did not succumb to, We're talking about the three temptations in the desert after the Lord's baptism. He will respond to the devil who will say, I will give you all my authority and you will govern the whole world if you fall before me and worship me. Are you interested? And he will say, yes, absolutely. I'm thrilled. And he will bow down and worship the devil in order to take all of that, quote unquote, authority. So now the authority, which is not his, but allowed by God, is now going to be passed on to his servant, the Antichrist. Again, God allowing this to happen in the great... Uh, Economy of salvation that he's going to work now. He's going to allow the freedom of the devil. The Antichrist is a man. They're going to freely do what, what they're going to do. Their disposition is to reject God and to work against him. So he's falling down to worship the devil, serving his own passions, his own ambitions, and he's going to become a uh, conduit and a organ for the devil. This regular man will be a man of political power, but then the devil will whisper in his ear and he'll say, all this can be yours. The entire world, you only need to worship me. The Antichrist will succumb to this temptation and follow being Antichrist. Being Antichrist and in the place of Christ. And di tu Christu, the opposite path of Christ. He will do this because of his insatiable passion of pride and vain glory. So another another thing, this is my thought here, I'm adding in, but you can see that if he has an insatiable passion of pride and vainglory, those who have the Spirit of God, the Christians, the true Christians in those days, they will have the spiritual wherewithal and the spiritual perception to see that this man is given over to his passions. Uh, sometimes we think it's going to be so deceptive and so so much propaganda, there'll be no way to discern things. I don't think so. The man is totally given over to his passions, totally uh, living for his vainglory. This this can't be hidden entirely from somebody who has little spiritual perception. Okay, that's just my two cents. Take it or leave it. Now, going on, the elder says, still looking at 13.5, he will rule for 42 months with his main agenda being the persecution and the destruction of the church, all right? So he's going to live for three and a half years at this point when he comes finally gets the power and he's going to be uh, initially very kind and loving and blah, blah, blah. He's going to be virtuous. They're going to they're be in awe of him. But then he's going to turn against the church. And his main agenda will be to totally destroy the church, knowing from the devil and from his own, you know, uh, great ambition and instinctively knowing that the, the church is the is his number one enemy more than anyone or anything else. He must, uh, if he's going to somehow be victorious, he must destroy the church if he's going to continue the rule. Uh, so this will not succeed, obviously. We know the an end, but also three and a half years is nothing, right? Three and a half years is nothing compared to all the empires of the world, as we've said before. So the Lord will put him to death. As the Apostle Paul says, God will destroy him in 1 Corinthians 3, 17. Uh, he will not, according to the Apostle Paul, get a chance to enjoy any of his power. Very little. Very soon he'll be destroyed. Nor will the Jews. He will be governing, enjoy their time with him, because during the second coming of Christ, the end of history will be at hand. It's very interesting that those Jews who will not convert and not embrace the Messiah, 
although we know there will be a portion that will come back through the preaching of the of the of the prophets but those who will not who will be his let's say governing body that will be with him and prepare the way for him and then also serve him for their own uh you know special interest they they will also very quickly uh lose that which they sought for so long uh and uh and we're expecting for their people to become essentially one with the messiah and ruling the world they're not going to have that's not going to last very long so I'm still on this day.